Greetings Whiskey Sensei, this is Whiskey Whistle and I'm your host Mark. Today on Whiskey Review number 79, we're going back to Japan for one of the missing single malt Japanese whiskeys from my Japanese whiskey series. And that is Hakushu from Suntory Whiskey. Hakushu is, um, well, it's a single malt. This particular one is 12 years old and it's 43% ABV. So let's just get started by opening that up and I'll bring that closer for you to see. There it is. Whoa. Cute little miniature. Almost ashamed to open it, but that's what I'm going to do for you. If you're new to Whiskey Whistle, well, um, I've been doing this for nearly about 11 months now. And, um, well, I quite enjoy uh, whiskey and I enjoy sharing it with you. So I sure do hope that, uh, that you enjoy watching. For all of my returning subscribers, a big, big thank you. And, um, well, I've got one particular subscriber who really loves Japanese whiskey. Um, so, Jake, if you're watching this one, this one's for you. Here's Hakushu. There we go. And we are going to go long, long with that one. There it is. So if you, oh my goodness, what an aroma. If you're not sure what 50 milliliters looks like in a Glencairn glass, there it is. Well, I've aerated that a little bit. How about that? I can see a little tiny micro bubbles in there. Very cool. Okay. Well, uh, no room to set that there, is there? Mm, not quite. Okay, now, um, since I've never ever tried this before, I am going to let that sit for a little bit. Hmm. Yes, it needs to rest for a little while. And let's discuss Hakushu, shall we? Um, Hakushu was founded in 1973. Uh, uh, the foothills of, boy, foothills of Mount... Mount Kai? No, that can't be right. Uh, shoot, well, please let me know which mountain that... I, I, I can't read my own writing. Can you believe it? Anyway, this is owned by Suntory. Uh, initially, this particular whiskey was meant uh, as uh, meant to be one of the the malts that goes into blended Japanese whiskey. However, in recent years, in the last let's say 15 years, 15, 20 years, uh, the world has gone absolutely crazy for Japanese whiskey. Uh, so this is pretty much readily available um, all over the world. Now, Hakusha, the distillery has six wash and six spirit stills. So that's 12 stills in total. That's quite a large um, stable of stills. And, um, well, I couldn't find the output, but I'm guessing that that is going to be in excess of four or five million liters per year of pure spirit. Um, and if you're watching, you'll notice that it looks as though there are two buildings. So there's an east wing and a west wing. The east wing is newer, the west wing is older, and apparently the west wing is the one that's predominantly used now for distillation. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So Suntory. Now, um, you may want to watch my Yamazaki 12-year-old review, or perhaps the Hibiki 17-year-old. And you can do so. I'll put a link to the uh, uh, the uh, what you might call it the playlist at the end of this particular review. Okay, so watch for that one. Okay, let's get on to the nose. Now I've never tried this before. I've simply got one bottle, so this will be a real time tasting event. I'm smelling pears. 
it's a hint of smokiness in there. Very, very nice wood is being used. So the maturation has been pretty much immaculate. And that's lending some spice, some vanilla, a bit of oakiness. Apples as well. So apples and pears. It's quite perfumey. A bit of lavender. Hmm. Ooh, and then with time, a bit of caramel develops. Hmm. My mouth is watering. Let me just say that. Well, let's get on to the palette now, the flavors. And before so, there will be a short advertisement right here. Welcome back. So the palette, Hakusha 12-year-old. Hmm. That is potent. It starts out with a real, real bright sweetness. And then it begins to develop a bit of sour and bitter flavors that really accentuate the sweetness in a very, very positive way. Let's try that again. Hmm. Well, this is really interesting. Have you been to the dentist and they put a pack that you have to bite onto for a period of time? Maybe they, maybe they don't do that anymore. That was a fluoride um, something or other to strengthen your, your teeth. But you got to choose your own flavor, be it strawberry or marshmallow or this, that, or the other. Uh, anyway, so this really reminds me of uh, the strawberry um, fluoride dental, what can I call that? Um, uh, dental tooth pack. It's like a pack for your teeth. I don't know what it's called. Um, interesting. Let's go back in there. Mm. And a hint of smoke really develops, keeping in the uh, the whiskey in your mouth for a little while. You'll find a bit of uh, smoky accents come through. Hmm. I'm getting some Asian plum as well. Uh, the meishil uh, in Korean, so meishil, tastes a little bit like um, meishil chu or um, um, meishil, what is it called? Meishil chip, meishil cha. Um, meishil just means green plum, green Asian plum and Koreans as well as uh, the Japanese and I believe the Chinese take those plums and um, make delicious wines and spirits uh, from them. Yeah, I can even smell that a little bit now. Cheers, everyone. Hmm. 
the longer you keep it in your mouth, the more difficult it becomes to keep it in your mouth. It gets quite dry. Um, dry and spicy. And finish-wise, you got that Asian plum, other orchard fruits like apples and pears, hint of toffee, no vanilla, predominantly fruit flavors are really coming through, and um, no smokiness in the finish. Let's add some water. I will add a good, let's call that three milliliters. We'll let it mix up a little bit. Now, if you have tried Hakushu uh, or any other Japanese uh, whiskeys, I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment. Tell me what I should look for next. Um, there are a few uh, new ones out on the market that I'd like to try, although they're a little bit cost, uh, what can I say, prohibitive. They're very cost prohibitive. Um, this little mini I paid 25,000 won for. That's about $23 US. That's a crazy price. Um, probably nuts for having paid that much. I did get a bit, a bit of a discount because I've been back at the same uh, seller for um, a few purchases of, of smaller miniatures. Excuse me, so that was nice. Full bottle retail here in Seoul for the 12 year old, I think is around about 150,000 won. So, all mixed, yes it is. Okay, let's check out the nose with water. Before that, stay tuned for a word from my sponsors. Right here. Good, welcome back. Advertisements that appear on Whiskey Whistle on this channel, um, should any sort of um, monetary, uh, let's say, funds accumulate, uh, they will be used for future reviews, for future events, for future, um, well, let's call it uh, maybe on location films as well. Hmm, so with water. I think I'm getting a bit of peach coming through now. Mm-hmm, hint of peach in there. Well, let's taste it now, shall we? Other than that, other than that it's pretty much the same. Okay, so the palette. The flavors, the taste with water. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. This has got candied fruit up the yin yang. The yin and the yang. <laughs> um, candied fruit, uh, the, some of these Asian fruits like the, the meishu, the green plum I mentioned. Hmm. A bit of plum in general. So regular Typical Western black plums, Asian green plums. Fruit is the dominant flavor here. Hint of herbal in there as well, a little bit of grass. Grassy notes. Mm. Some citrus. Like, um, oh, I forget the name of those. The, um, 
typical mandarin oranges. So I'm getting a lot of the skin, um, as well as the taste of uh, the pith, the white, the white stuff on the um, uh, on the flesh. Hmm. So hakushu. This is hakushur. Uh, definitely go and get yourself some. Uh, if you are a Scotch whiskey um, devotee, you may want to cheat on Scotch whiskey for this one. Uh, if uh, if you're into other kinds of whiskeys like bourbon. This has enough power. It's quite a powerful flavor. There's a lot of very, very active wood uh, coming through with the Hakushu as well. Hmm. Finish-wise, again, um, plums, a bit of honey, and uh, that uh, Korean plum uh, spirit or wine. So meisilju, um, hint of flavor coming from that. Even this, I would say, yes, there are some similarities with Scotch whiskey, but there are more similarities with um, other Asian uh, single malt uh, whiskeys that are out there. So interesting. It seems as though that whole region has a particular effect on, on the whiskey in the cask. Hmm. Let's have one more little taste. Why not? Mm. So potent, this thing. My goodness. There's been a couple of whiskeys I've had recently that have made me rethink the idea that 46% is ideal. This is 43% and there is so much going on. Um, I've added water. I've added water yet again. So I almost wonder if um, this particular one, the 12-year-old, should be released simply at 40%. What would that accomplish? Well, not everybody wants to add water in their whiskey. So that's one way to get around that. Uh, secondly, well, I've lost my train of thought. I digress. Let's get back into that again. Hmm. Orange, vanilla, and uh, cinnamon seem to really come through. Hint of tropical fruit now as well. Hmm. Well, I wonder what you think of this. Leave me a comment. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to see uh, some new subscribers coming from this particular video. Um, so what about the score for uh, Hakushu, 12 year old? Hmm. The, 
The palette is certainly attractive. The finish is great also, as is the finish. The finish is great. The uh, nose is great, as is the finish. So I think that uh, this deserves an 87 out of 100. 87 out of 100, that's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Square for Hakusha 12-year-old. Um, leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you think of this. And uh, subscribe. Please do that. That way we can uh, interact um, very nice, nicely together, and also you'll get all of the updates in a prompt fashion. Okay, so subscribe. Subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. Click right there. Uh, go get yourself some Hakushu. Uh, give it a try. Tell me what you think, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.